You meet Steve Bartles. Yes. What is Steve Bartles to you at Arista? Uh, Steve Bartles at Arista initially was nothing to me. Uh, Lionel right now was my boss. Steve Bartles was head of promotion overall. Um, and I mean, now he's my very good friend and mentor, mm -hmm. but I meet him because um, I'm getting records played on the radio station that Lionel's taking credit for, but Steve knows that Lionel's not doing it, but he's like, who's doing it? So I ran into him one day in the hallway. He's like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Pecos. He's like, oh, you don't want to hear getting shot out on Hot 97 all the time, right? I'm like, yes, yeah, me. He goes, oh, me and you got to talk. So it's just like Steve is the guy who changed my life. He's the guy who taught me how to take my enthusiasm, love for what I did on a street and marketing level, and become a real executive in the music industry. So he, he helped me with my transitional phase. Talk about transition. You go from Arista to where? Uh, so I stay, I'm at Arista for a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and then um, Arista, L.A. leaves, mm -hmm. uh, and then he goes to Def Jam with Doug Morris Universal for a year. But at that time, you know, when you start getting bigger and better, there's something called contracts. So now they're signing you and making you stay for a couple of years. So I had to go to Jive. So um, uh, uh, Jive BMG acquired Arista, mm -hmm. so I stayed there. So I spent a year and a half uh, on tour with Usher, which changed my life. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. So uh, uh, when I stopped doing the rap stuff, you know, we got into radio. I started dealing with all the program directors and the big guys around the country. Um, and then I had to do a one-year bid. I used to call it my one-year bid. So I just went on tour with Usher. Nice. You get over to Def Jam. Yep. How do you get over to Def Jam? Do they... So Somebody my one year, my one year contract one is year up. One year contract, non-compete. I'm assuming. Non-compete. So um, Jive tries to keep me there. I don't mm -hmm. want to stay. Um, so then Steve Bartles. That's my first introduction into becoming a vice president. So that's when they created lifestyle promotion and marketing. So this is your first title at Def Jam. Yeah, and it was the first title created. Remember, there was never that job Correct. title mm -hmm. didn't exist. So they created a job title for me which now is a real job title all around the world. Tell everybody, what is a VP of Lifestyle and Promotion? Uh, a, a, a Vice President of Lifestyle and Promotion is just a guy who knows radio, marketing, street marketing, um, guerrilla marketing uh, on every level, meaning who can be able to deal with independence around the country. We're dealing with what we did was putting up a lot of street paraphernalia and stuff like that, poster boards and doing a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, but also could deal with the DJs and also the MDs and music directors. So it was a whole thing that was created for me. Now, what you didn't mention, you worked extremely close with artists, you know, just day-to-day -day at that time, no? Well, that was really what my strength was, is that I was able to have great relationships with all the artists. So, like... The reason why I went on tour with Usher was because every time he was in New York, we would spend a lot of time together. By the way, ironically, it was Puff that was the first executive producer uh, producer that made Usher who he was. Remember when yep, Usher was, absolutely. when L.A. first signed yep. Usher, he put him with Puff we and him with Puff he gave him a clothes album. swag thing. So that was my strength. I was able to hang out with the artists because I was relatable. We were from the street. We, they, we protected them in ways that other executives couldn't. We made sure they were good whenever they went out. Um, we kept them cool and stuff like that. So that really helped a lot with, um, with my career. So, you know, D-Rock tells you mm -hmm. your name is bigger than your pockets. Mm -hmm. um, by the time you get to Def Jam, did your pocket catch up to your name? Definitely caught up to my <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes. Okay, we won't ask what that check looked like, but I know it was big because those were the glory days. But I bring up Steve Bartles for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Steve Bartles was nothing to you in the Arista building. He ran promotions overall, but you work for Lionel. Yep. But you never know who's watching you. It's so important for you to do a good job when you have no idea that anybody's watching because Steve Bartles at Arista, you had no idea that one day he would leave, go to Def Jam, become the big wig over there, remember you, bring you over, and give you that big check. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's just an amazing gem for anybody and everybody who's just watching this or in this room. You work like you have a thousand people watching you if there's nobody in the room because you never know who's going to be in position one day to give you a check. Mm -hmm.
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.